Welcome, Kevin, Thank to you, Tampa, Karina. to this beautiful home in South Tampa. Thank you for having Thank me. Thank you for coming. Kevin and I, we've worked together with, what, three clients? At least. That are doctors and that are from Brazil. And today, we're going to be talking about a special type of loan. Yes, the, called the physician physician's loan. mortgage or doctor loan, as a lot of lenders call it. But before I started the questions, sure. can you please, Kevin, introduce yourself? Yes, Tell me yes. a little bit about your experience. So Kevin Strickland, I've been in the business of mortgage lending for about 25 years. Um, I, I was at a large uh, institution uh, for about 17, 18 years, and then we, I moved to a smaller uh, bank about five years ago. I represent First Horizon Bank, um, and we have uh, some pretty good presence here in the Tampa market, uh, all over Florida and many parts of the Southeast. Um, we're about an $80 billion bank and have a large portfolio of lending appetite that we do. Uh, and the doctor loan, as we call it, medical physician program, is something that we kind of specialize in as a niche. All right, so first question, what yeah. is a physician loan yeah. and how does it differ from traditional mortgage loans? Great question. A physician program is, at First Horizon, it is um, a loan that has up to 100% financing. You know, that's kind of scary to a lot of people who are like 100% yeah. financing, but you know, uh, up to $1.5 million, we can go to up to 100% financing for a medical doctor criteria, so an MD. We go up to 5% down, mm -hmm. would take you up to roughly $2 million. And then if you were in that $2.5 million price range, you would put 10% down. Okay. The beauty of a medical doctor program is that there's no mortgage insurance. So you're getting 100% financing, with no MI as we call it in this industry. And what is MI? So if you've never bought a home before or if you have, mortgage insurance, if you don't put 20% down as a traditional mortgage, you're gonna have insurance that the lender has to get to basically if the loan was to go to default, um, it, you, you're never gonna typically sell it for 100% of what we, what we, what we uh, owe on the loan. So it helps us absorb some of that loss and sell the home quickly and then it's, it's basically an insurance policy to pay the lender back. And it's really for primary residents only. Okay. It's not for you know someone buying a second Investors. home at the beach or the mm -hmm. mountains, or it's not for an investment property. This is for, you know, you're buying it for, you know, your, your place to stay, your primary residence. So what are the eligibility criteria for physicians to qualify for this loan program? Very good question. So again, I'm gonna to speak to First Horizon mm -hmm. uh, and our eligibility, and I've got my phone here because <laughs> I gotta get it right. So medical doctors is the primary uh, individual that we, we work with on this program. Mm -hmm. We really have the best loan program out there, but it's really gated towards just a few specific clients. So MDs, DOs, dental surgeons, OMS, uh, doctors of pediatric medicine that are licensed to practice in the United States. Mm -hmm. So are there specific loan options for different stages of their career, for example, for a resident, a right, fellow? Right. There's really no difference with the First Horizon. We can do 100% if your loan amount was 250000 or we could do 100% if your loan amount is a million five. So there's really no differentiation in, in the programs. What are the typical loan terms and interest rate sure, for this type sure. of loan? By the way, let me just say that we're shooting this video end of May 2023. Yes, it's basically like a 30-year fixed rate type of okay. product. Um, it's amortized over 30 years. Mm -hmm. uh, at our bank, we really, you know, when you get a rate quote from me, you're gonna see that there's a big difference between a 30 year fixed rate and an adjustable rate mortgage. So the word adjustable rate mortgage is, it's, it's also acronymed ARM, A-R-M. Mm -hmm. And that just means that the rate is fixed for a certain amount of time. Mm -hmm. It's amortized over 30 years. Sometimes, you know, the clients get scared because, oh, my rate's gonna change in 10 years. That's a decade. Yeah. That is a decade, okay? that's. That's 10 years down the road, and I've been doing this long enough that I see, and you've been in the real estate business long enough, you see that our, our clients come back to us. Yes. I can't tell you how many times, a year, two, three down the road, okay, I got them a 10-year arm and they're wanting to buy another house. This is like, for many physicians, um, the doctor program is a starter process. Yeah. It's a starter loan. Helps them buy, get, a, get a home in the market at the right price, build their wealth, mm -hmm. sell it, and buy something bigger. Um, you know, their income goes up, and it's constantly, they're, they're looking to you know, improve. They're yeah. like, you know, households grow, things change. Yeah. Um, so a, an arm is nothing to be scared of. 
And I always tell my clients, this is your first home, it's not your last home. Right. Can you explain the process of applying yes, for a loan? Yes. How does it work? Yeah. So today's world, it's all digital, right? Mm -hmm. I always like to talk to my client first. And like, you know, a lot of clients like to text and, you know, hey, you know, I'm gonna apply for a loan, where are your rates, can I do this? But I always say, I can date those details, but let's have a conversation first. Mm -hmm. So get to know each other, make sure that, you know, we're the right fit, that, that all this is, you know, that I feel comfortable that it's gonna work out. Mm -hmm. um, and then you apply on our website. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I send you a link to our website, you apply. Typically, you know, having your ducks in a row is important. Mm -hmm. For a physician, the most important thing is to make sure you've got an employment contract. We see a lot of letters of intent and the client wants to buy a house right, right now and close. Right. Well, that's not an employment agreement, mm -hmm. okay? The employment agreement, you know, I saw a letter today where it said, okay, this is the letter of intent. We've got six months to get you the actual offer letter. You can't go and buy a house on a letter of intent. We have to have the actual executed employment agreement, okay? That's one big, big thing. Make sure you've got an executed employment agreement. We can pre-qualify you, mm -hmm. but you're not gonna actually be able to write an offer and buy a house yeah. and close on a loan until we have the employment agreement. A big thing that we see with some of the, the passports and with the visas is that uh, they expire within like six months mm -hmm. of, and we have to, they, have, they can't expire within six months of okay. closing, okay? Um, so that's, that's really important. You know, the, the visas, the sponsorship, as I mentioned, mm -hmm. making sure it's moved from, you know, one employer to another, mm -hmm. we've got, that's critical to your job mm -hmm. as a physician. Yeah. Um, and then making sure that your license is, is current. If you're you know, licensed in California and you're moving to Florida, using that as an example because we know it so yes. well, we can see that the applications happen, we can see it's, and it's 99% you know, of the time it happens, mm -hmm. but we do go by what the employment agreement says. If it says it's contingent upon that mm -hmm. transferring, we can't close until that transfers. Okay. So that's a long answer to the process, but you know, we, we pre-approve you, you have your information, I take it, I do a pre-underwrite on it. Mm -hmm. um, I send it, all your information to an underwriter who does, you know, looks at our guidelines and makes sure that it all lines up. Mm -hmm. They tell us if we need more or less of information. And then we kind of go down the process of getting an appraisal and you know, towards the closing process. So if a person is ready, already have all the documentation mm -hmm. that you need, it really takes, what, a day? It, if they yeah, provide you exactly, with everything. Exactly. Now, if we need to wait until the license is ready, well, that's then for, it all depends on case by case. But. Right, I mean, we've issued, you know, I issue pre-approvals all the time with, mm -hmm. you know, a, a, with hypothe you know, scenarios like, hey, this is in the works of happening. Mm -hmm. We'll issue a pre-approval as you get a contract, but I'm gonna put on there that, that hey, this is contingent upon yeah. X, Y, and Z happening, you right. know? Because right. we don't wanna, you know, your, your contract is written for a certain amount of time, typically 30 days, yeah. and, and you wanna make sure that we hit that, mm -hmm. you, know, you know, hit that time for everybody. Yeah. So here in America, a yeah. lot of the uh, doctors will yeah. have a student loan. How does that affect their eligibility for this loan program? As I mentioned earlier, I mean, we don't see that too many on the foreigners, right? The, right, the foreign yes. folks moving here, but we do yeah. see it with a lot of American physicians. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they have a, a good amount of student loan. Yeah. And I'll just use a, a, a simple example. Um, say a, an individual has $300,000 in student loan. Mm -hmm. um, right now, the, the U.S. Uh, um, administration has basically put a forbearance yeah. on the payments. So when we pull a credit report, we'll see all these student loans and maybe it adds up to $300,000, there's yeah. zero payment. We can't qualify someone that, that type of debt with zero. If the borrower will qualify this way, we will just take 1% of that outstanding balance and apply it towards the payment. Mm -hmm. That's the most simplest way to do it. $300,000 debt, 1%. Mm -hmm. We can't use zero, we'll use $3,000 a month as, okay. a, as a minimum payment. Um, if that, you know, if the debt ratios are too, too difficult where, you know, that doesn't work, then we'll say, okay, Mr. Client, go back to your student loan company and ask mm -hmm. them to provide you with an income-based repayment plan. Mm -hmm. And what that is, is it's a calculation that they'll run based on the income that they make today. Mm -hmm. And so it might not be 1%, it might be, you know, instead of $3,000 payment, it might only be a $1,000 mm -hmm. payment okay. with an income-based repayment plan. And typically those things gradually st step up. Every year they'll say, okay, provide us your income. Yeah. And if it's gone up, then they'll take another little bit higher percentage and mm -hmm. your payment. But for qualifying, we'll just use that income-based okay. repayment plan. I love how you're flexible and you help people in case by case. That's yeah, you gotta idea. be. I mean, it's yeah. everybody, everybody's goal is to, you know, provide home ownership. Yeah. 
So we're all in it together. How does a lender evaluate a physician's income and future earning potential mm -hmm. when determining loan approval and terms? Mm -hmm. If someone is going to be guaranteed, you know, three hundred thousand dollars for two years, and then they're going to be on these RVU type of uh, production-based incentives down the road, we really can't use that yeah. in income down the road. We're going to use the most conservative guaranteed figure mm -hmm. right now. So if it's three hundred thousand dollars, that's what we got to use. Okay. Um, if there's some other bonus structure that's in there that's spelled out, we might be able to use it, but um, for the most part, an underwriter is just going to be the most conservative okay. approach. So you're going to go with whatever's it's, on the contract. Yeah, whatever's on the contract, okay. right. So let's say a doctor in Brazil who has great history and income mm -hmm. that can be proved in Brazil is now being hired here. Right. So they're coming on a green card already. They're right. coming on, I don't know, EB2, EB whatever visa. So when, as soon as they arrive here, they will have a proof of residency, the yeah. green card. They're going to have a social security number that's yeah. brand new and they're going to have a letter from their employer or contract. Right. Will that be enough for them to qualify or do they need to wait uh, yeah, for question. example, a tax return yeah. or a certain credit history that they are going to be starting to build here. That's a great question because I haven't seen it like the scenarios we've been we've been through right. recently. Um, they already had history here. Already they already had, lived they've here. They've already had a little bit yeah. of history here. You know, whether yeah. it be nine months or a year. I mean, it's you know, it's not too hard to establish credit. Mm -hmm. It's just it's not immediate. Okay. You know, it takes time. So it takes it takes a history of payments here in the United States right. to show, and we can't pull a credit report, even if you have, I don't know if you have them in Brazil or not, but you can't pull a, a foreign credit report here right. to qualify. Well, yeah, because then you, you would know? be a foreign national loan, but right. if you want to use that type of loan, I'm assuming you must be a resident and right. you must have history here. Right. So they just need to be patient. They will be qualified. Yeah, they'll, yeah. they'll qualify they'll later qualify. on. I mean, it might be, you know, I, I've seen a couple where, you know, maybe they chose to rent mm -hmm. for six months or a year mm -hmm. and they added that rent history to their credit report. Okay. To yeah. help start uh, so build you, that. So you think one tax return would be sufficient or you need to and, and it really isn't the tax return. It's more okay. in that scenario. Mm -hmm. It's because they've got an employment agreement. Some of these hospitals, I mean, this is what they do, right? Mm -hmm. They, they, mm -hmm. they bring they the client over contract, yeah. um, and they got a contract. I mean, that's, we write, we underwrite based off that, the contract for the income. Okay. But then the other piece of the part puzzle is the credit history okay and that's and then, and then the eligibility the borrower's eligibility with regards to their residency status and mm -hmm. all that you know we underwrite towards their credit history and 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 most clients if not all clients that I've seen have had enough credit history mm -hmm. um, you know again we need a 670 credit score mm -hmm. and you know if you get a credit card at one of the banks yeah everybody's got you know hey look at your credit score, here Article, it is. Whatever, yeah. It's not exactly the same. Yeah. That's called a consumer credit score. So um, for those specific clients, the perfect scenario is, I will put them in contact with you even though they might not be ready, but you're right. going to be able to tell them, look, this is what, how long you need to wait or what you need to work on. You can probably pull their credit and say what they need to do, can you give them or, tips? Mm -hmm. I, mean, I mean, we've got, I've got, you know, this, the, and I failed to mention this earlier, but the, the professional loan program at most, at, it's a portfolio loan. So these loans on any bank that offers them, it sits on their balance sheet, okay? They don't sell them to Fannie Mae or okay. Freddie Mac or anything like that. You pay, in my case, First Horizon mm -hmm. every month, All okay? Right. Um, it sits on our balance sheet. That said, you know, lenders that offer this don't just wanna do a loan. Right. We want a relationship, okay? okay? It's a yeah. loss leader type of thing. Yeah. It's one of those things that you know, we want you to bank with us as well. We want you to open an account with us. Let me introduce you to our private banker, to mm -hmm. our investment, uh, help us create a financial plan for mm -hmm. you. You're new coming to the States and, and right. or, or to Florida or in most cases, and we can help you create a plan. Mm -hmm. um, and, and a mortgage is part of that. Okay. But there's other pieces that go to it as well as far as, you know, establishing a banking account. On top of that, you know, once you come here, we've got bankers that can help you Say you wanted to, you know, open up a, a credit card mm -hmm. to help start establishing your. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure we offer it here. Mm -hmm. um, I believe we do. We, uh, you know, a a, um, a cash secured mm -hmm. account. Yeah. Maybe you put twenty thousand dollars in the bank, mm -hmm. and we give you a ten thousand dollar credit card to start your limit. Credit yeah, history. you know, okay. that's just a, a simple example. Yeah, but that help. That might help. And that's so, something that you can connect them I with would a connect banker them that, that would do to it. a banker that can help okay. do that. And all I right. work just the mortgage piece of it. Mm -hmm. But we've got all, you know, we've got private banking group yeah. 
that, that does all that okay. behind the scenes. Yeah. So you're so. kind of like me. If I don't do it or if I don't know, I know people who do right, it and we'll right, right. get it done. Absolutely. <laughs> right. So to finish up this conversation, I wanted to talk to you about our um, clients that we've had success yeah, with. Yeah. One of them moved from California. Yeah. And we moved kinda from Brazil to California, yes. California to Florida yes. within about a, a two year time frame. Pretty quick. Yeah. It was very. I don't think he needed to do any type of translation or uh, a few things. We were from from Brazil. We had some yeah. assets that were coming from the sale of, um, of something okay. uh, in Brazil. And so we had to get documentation that, from a lender's perspective. You know, if you've got large deposits coming into the mm -hmm. bank, a bank account here that you have, they want to know where that money came from. So we got to document it. So in his case, we had to document, you know, hey, what was this sale? Mm -hmm. um, we had to send a, tr a translating company because okay. everything that we do has to be translated into, mm -hmm. into English. You and know. that's something that you can assist or he can find a company that would do it maybe even? Um, I, we can assist. Uh, okay. you, you know, it's one of those things that uh, we, we try to have as little translated as possible. Okay. Only, only like the certain things. All right. Um, because the cost can be very expensive right. uh, with that. Um, right. But if it's bank statements or something, you know, sometimes, you know, on, on, the, on the bank's websites, they mm -hmm. say, you know, English or Spanish or, mm -hmm. you know, Portuguese, whatever it might be type of. Uh, bank statement mm -hmm. and just provide us with it when it's translated in English right. means that you know helps and overall this program for a person that is a physician yeah. that is is it easily it's one type of loan that you can easily qualify people in general it it's, really I mean I don't think I've seen a physician that I haven't been able to do very yeah. rarely uh, do we have that so you're being um, very successful with very it. successful yeah. be patient with regards mm -hmm. to um, you know with your employer with, you know, as I mentioned earlier, you might write an intent here mm -hmm. six months and you want to go out and buy a house now, but right. you got to have an executed contract or, right. you know, in, in a recent... It's either wait or help me know what's going on so that I can negotiate on my end, we, we, which that's always, what happened. We're yeah. a team. We had and, a really... And, and our clients that we've all worked with yeah. understand we're a team. We're all working yeah. together yeah. for the same goal. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it's just, you know, be patient with it. Yeah. Um, you know, some are slam dunks and we're the one we got going on that's closing at the end of the month. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we've been waiting to close him for. I know you've been ready you were <laughs> for 45 days. <laughs> yeah. so. And then others, it, it might take 45 to 60 yeah. to 90 days to get yeah. through because there's some puzzle that we we're right. trying to solve for. Um, you know, the, the U.S. immigration uh, sometimes uh, my understanding is it's easier to work with when you're coming in from our pre versus when yeah. you're transferring from state to state. Yeah. So, um, yeah. you know, you just got to be patient with it. There's right. a lot of red tape. Yeah. Well, thank you, Kevin, oh, for coming thank on the way here. Yeah. yeah, this was, this was great. I know there's so much that we could continue to talk about because yeah. there's a lot of details, a lot of examples, and it's always case by case. Yeah. And um, if you are a doctor who's moving to the Tampa Bay area or to Florida, because right. you're licensed in Florida, so we you do, can We do them. all over, like Georgia, Florida, oh, Georgia uh, all well. over, all right. yeah. okay. Texas. So contact me and I'll put you in contact with Kevin. And I hope you like this content. Let me know if you have any questions, comment down below. Don't forget to subscribe. Find me on Instagram. Do you have social media? I do. Okay. Not as well as you. <laughs> <laughs> So, I'll just give them your phone number. Yeah, call just call you. me. You, right. You're my lead source anyways. So Kevin.strickland at firsthorizon.com. All right. See you so. next time.